Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here with us at Chet Snow's Secret Conference in Tempe, Arizona, 2009. I'd like to introduce you to someone that I think needs no introduction. You all know Richard C. Hoagland, and you know his background as uh, Walter Cronkite's former science advisor during all of the space missions. And today, Richard will be connecting the dots that something that he does so well. And he will be talking about NASA, Kennedy, and the Obama connection. So let me give you Richard, Richard C. Hoagland. In 2012, as we said before, the Earth aligns very nicely so that if you're sitting here, you look across the sun, which of course high noon, and on the other side of where the Earth would be in June, way out here, some 26 thousand light years away is the center of the galaxy. Now, that's kind of a code. That alignment, if you're trying to provide a symbolic code for what could happen, that alignment code is very important. Well, it turns out that this is the geometry in the galaxy. Here's the Milky Way. Here's the sun. Here's some of the stars in the sun's vicinity. This is the Orion Nebula. Here's Betelgeuse, Rigel, the Crab Nebula, the star Sirius. They're all part of the Orion complex. Now, notice, here's the center of the galaxy. Here is the Orion complex, which is exactly 180 degrees away. This is a radio plot of the galaxy's hydrogen uh, taken from one of the recent surveys. And you can see here's the galactic center. Here are the various spiral arms of the Milky Way tabulated. This one is called the Orion arm for a good reason. Because when you look directly away from the galactic center out, out in intergalactic space, lo and behold, you are looking in the direction of <clears throat> Orion. Now, why is Orion important? Oh, why is Orion important? How does I begin? How do I begin? It, it's, it's like Orion not only is a physical constellation, an astonishingly beautiful physical constellation, here are the three belt stars. Here's the sword, uh, so-called sword. Here's the Orion Nebula. This is uh, Betelgeuse. This is Rigel, Bellatrix, and uh, I forget the other one's name. I think it's Saif. Anyway, the point is that Orion, for some reason, as you'll see in Dark Mission, became associated intimately in the NASA mythology with the pyramids. And we now know that the pyramids from Robert Baval's work are lined up at Giza almost exactly, I mean really exactly, mimicking the belt stars of the constellation of Orion. And on December 21, 2012, there is this wonderful alignment between the Giza shafts, those long, thin corridors that extend out from the King's Chamber right to the center, to the surface of the pyramid, with the belt stars of Orion. Again, echoing this important geometry. This is now another graphical way to show this. On December 21, 2012, the alignment is exact. On that night, if you look at noon across the sun, at high noon, you'll be looking toward the center of the galaxy. If you turn around and look at midnight on the same night, you're looking directly at Orion. That, of course, shows up in, of all things, the official logo of Kennedy's Apollo program to the moon. This is a NASA patch. This, when I saw this finally and realized what it all meant, it was like, oh my god. It's, it's, it's the Emily Dickinson thing again. Tell all the truth, but tell it slant. Unless you have the background, unless you have the context, you're not going to figure this stuff out. Well, it gets even better. Because in 2004, this president <clears throat> suddenly says, we've got to go back to the moon. Oh my god, we've, we've got to go back to the moon. And he initiates at NASA headquarters in January an amazing program called Project Constellation. Well, Constellation, besides all this cute stuff, you know, the NASA logo and, you know, Earth, Moon, Mars, it's got the three belt stars of Orion, and this represents, of course, the Orion Nebula. Orion, Orion, oh, and by the way, notice this. 
This is important, okay? Because they then called the key spacecraft that's going to succeed the shuttle, surprise, surprise, Orion. And when you do this little number, you look at the NASA logo. Now, why is, why is this important? Because in the Egyptian, Orion is really Osiris, the god of resurrection and death in the Egyptian mythology, which has to do with cycles. You die and then you're reborn. Orion, Osiris is the guy. Well, in Egyptian, it's not spelled Osiris or Orion. It's spelled Asar, A-S-A-R. So every time you see an A, I mean, look at, look at this. This is Asar, saying, reiterating that, in fact, Asar is Osiris is Orion. Now we fast forward the film, and we find in the NASA logo, I always wondered about the NASA logo, and then I had a, a kind of an insight from, from a film that was done by Jose Escamilla. Probably the only important useful thing in the entire film was someone pointed out that this symbol, in fact, is this. It's another A. NASA itself is dedicated to Orion, to Osiris, to Asar, and to the alignment to the alignment of Orion as a celestial clock that marks midnight, December 21, 2012. So in essence, NASA is an agency devoted to 2012. No wonder the morning after our special, they came out and attacked us. They had to. Someone was so bright and wanted us to connect the dots and everybody else to connect the dots because you don't do that in Washington unless, in fact, you want to do exactly the opposite of what you're doing. And the guy behind doing the opposite is Barack Obama because it's his NASA now and his space agency and his agenda, whatever that agenda is. At least that's my model, and I'm looking at how the dots connect. And science is nothing if it's not prediction, so you predict what happens next. And what's going to happen next is going to be an amazing set of revelations from Obama vis-a-vis -vis NASA through Charlie Bolden in the next few months concerning mind-blowing stuff. And that's about all I can say because I don't have any more time to say anything more until we do the next conference and then I'll tell you more of the story. Now where this meets the road is the physics. Remember, the physics is symbolically represented by entwined tetrahedra representing the force structure in rotating planets emerging at 19.5, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, isn't it interesting that if you put the Orion logo of the new missions back to the moon, by the way, Constellation has got to refer to Orion. What could you possibly have called a program Constellation without really giving it away, except that it had to be Orion? When you do this, you wind up with that. So at every level, the connection between Giza, the cosmic clock, the countdown to 2012, the alignment, celestial alignment, which is your ultimate cosmic clock, and NASA's overwhelming fascination with Egyptian, with, with Egyptian mythology and with the representations of what's going on on the plateau, it all comes together in this symbology over and over and over again, which, of course, is why NASA had to come out the morning after the special and say, those guys are nuts, except they didn't have to. By doing that, they have elevated the discussion and forced a lot of people who would never even have given it a second thought to begin to ask the question that we ask in the book, what did NASA know and when did it know it about 2012? Well, my thesis today is that NASA itself was formed as an agency by Eisenhower, the intermediate president between Truman, who first figured out we got a problem, Houston, Eisenhower, who set in motion the International Geophysical Year and set up NASA and all that, and then John Kennedy, whose job it was to take all this, put it together, and begin an active plan to do something to change what otherwise could potentially occur. Thank you.